my people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a goddamn great day. Welcome back to the channel. It is going to be a fantastic Throwback Thursday because I know that it's something that you guys have been wanting for a long time. A little bit impatient, but it's taken some research and me watching, you know, old games and trying to understand essentially what Sorry Ball was all about. And a lot about vertical passing, keeping possession, make sure you're rotating, have a whole host of different rotational pieces in the midfield trying to create space and I was trying to also replicate a very effective tactic to obviously translate into the FC24 game for you guys of course so we will be talking about Sari his fantastic Napoli side from 2016-17 um pushing the likes of Juventus very close obviously coming a bit short but um yeah we're going to be talking about how you can replicate and recreate that famed Napoli side from 2016 if you guys can please hit the like button down below subscribe if you are new and of course let's hop on straight into the goddamn video Okay, so taking a look at the formation at hand, there was nothing really spicy or jazzy about this formation. It is just a base 4-3-3 holding, no major changes to it whatsoever. So therefore, it would be one goalkeeper, two centre-backs, two full-backs, one DM, two central midfielders, one striker, and then of course, two wingers. Okay, so moving on to the tactics. Now, the tactical vision that I have set is custom. I couldn't really get the system to more or less fit into what... Sorry was all about that high line, the high press, but at the same time a possession-based brand of football. Of course, you can go with Tiki Taka, but then you can't play high up the field. You can go with uh, wing play, but then you can't compact the structure when you do have possession. So it's more or less a mix of all those variations and more so I think custom best suits it. So you are going to look to try and play a very good aggressive brand of football with a very high aggressive um, press that goes with it. So for the defense and the defensive style, I've set it to pressing off to possession loss, looking to win the ball back nice and high up the field. A very high line goes along with it. Of course, you can see it set to 90 with a nice central compact unit, making it very hard to play through the central areas of the field. Um, of course, there were a few spaces between the, the variations and the different, you know, press lines that you could say the midfield and the defense and the attack in the midfield. But more so, it's a very good way of pressing in certain moments, because if that press is beaten, you do have a bit of space to try and, you know, compose yourself and look to send that second or third wave of press um, at the opposition. Very seldom was the press beaten, though, from the Napoli side, and it would often force teams into those long balls um, from back to front. And that would more or less try and play into the hands of what Sari and Napoli were trying to do. And of course, they had Raul Albiol as well as Koulibaly at the time, physical unit specimens of human beings that could easily out duel their opponents in the end, look to try and win that ball back very effectively. Um, but yes, as for the, the depth, it does help with the offense. Going forward, pushing the wing backs nice and hard the field, allowing them to create that wave after wave after wave of pure attacking pressure on what the opposition's defense had to offer for, you know, their, their defensive outlets um but more so i think 90 best suits it to, to be honest you can go slightly higher but i think that's too risky and it can get you caught out more times not but with every risk there is always an, a reward but for me personally i think 90 best suits and reflects as well as you know protects you um from a potential counter attack every time as for the offense and the build up play i've set to slow build up as well as trans creation set to position of course looking to build up very effectively from the back and then obviously looking to progress forward Jorginho in this time was one of the best holding creative um, number sixes in the world he was the heartbeat he was the engine he was the guy that made everything tick very efficiently effectively and to be honest he's still doing that today for Arsenal I mean you hear Arsenal fans raving about how good Jorginho has been over these last few weeks and months and you can see it I mean he was the the heartbeat of the side and obviously when he left and went to Chelsea you saw Napoli not fall off completely, but they did fall off a little bit. It's not exactly that great, you know, offensive juggernaut. Um, but more so, with the slow build-up in play, you will effectively build up very slowly from back to front, looking for your centre-backs and sometimes your full-backs to show for, for the ball, and also that very effective DM. And of course, that was Jorginho. In this case, it's Lobotka. You want them to be able to get on the ball and look to progress forward and try and be that deep-line playmaker when required. Of course, with the possession being set to be on, um, it will help you know have your players show support look for the the ball in those wide areas you'll have supporting players in and around for that extra pass if it's in the central areas again you'll have those extra players rotating in and around your players um or your player with the ball looking to either show for a pass or potentially pull players out of position very effectively as for the width i've set it to 25 when they do go forward you want to have that quick interchanging five yard pass and move type rotation in your side and therefore i think a, a very narrow width for the offensive side of things does best reflect and suit how this Napoli side played. Very narrow, very compact going forward, trying to attack down the middle as much as possible. And also alleviating the, the wide areas 
um, and, and creating space down those wide areas for either a fullback or, or potentially one of the wingers to drift into that open space and look to try and attack from that slightly wider angle. As for the players in the box, I've set it to five more, so allowing one to three players to, you know, more or less try and commit into that attacking area, but more so, you don't want to overcommit to too many players because you want to have your players on the edge of the box looking to try and create and facilitate, maybe looking to effectively link up and create those passing movements into the box more so than have those players waiting in and around that attacking area waiting for a potential cross. Of course, you had Insignia and Dries Mertens and um, who was the other one? Callahan, I think. They, they aren't the tallest of players. They're not the, the most, you know, airily dominant players. So therefore, you can't always frequently whip in crosses. It would have to be a more controlled, a more direct pace, have those players walk their way into the box and effectively walk it into the goal. And more or less with uh, players in the box set to five, like I say, you have efficient and frequent build up from the edge of the area looking to work it in very effectively. For the corners and the free kicks, as for always, I have set it to four. Okay, so taking a look at the instructions, starting off at the back with the goalkeeper, of course, this was Pepe Reina at the time. He is set to come for crosses and be a sweeper keeper. Of course, you are playing a super high line, so you need a goalkeeper to be very proactive when reading the game, making sure that if there is a potential counter-attack, he can look to run out of his box and prevent that from happening. Also looking to play under pressure, play through presses of what the opposition is looking to throw at you. And more so, Maria as well as Reina were very good at doing so, of course. Every now and then, Reyna would be sometimes caught out with a very aggressive press from the opposition, but more so, you would expect him to be a very good sweeper keeper, and of course, come for those crosses, be very dominant in the air. And also, if he wasn't, of course, you had the likes of Kula Bali, and of course, Raul Albiol, who, like I said earlier, were physical specimens that could definitely deal with those aerial threats. As for the two centre-backs, I've set both of them to the same instructions. Both of them would be set to conservative interceptions. I'm looking to overcommit too much, trying to keep the shape and the structure at the back, especially with that very high line. You expect them to try and, you know, protect themselves as much as possible, so you don't really require them to be chasing after a potential loose ball or looking to try and win the, the ball through an interception. More so, keep the shape, keep the structure at the back, and if required, if necessary, win the aerial jewels and look to circulate it back into play. As for the two fullbacks, now, on the right-hand side, it was, of course, Hasai, who can also play on the left-hand side. He does play on the left-hand side currently for, for Lazio. Um, but it was Hasai and Gulam. Now, essentially, they were both very good attacking fullbacks. But with the right-hand side, because the likes of Napoli would look to spring a lot of their attacks down the left flank, the right-hand side, the fullback would not always get forward. So in order to replicate that role very effectively, the attacking runs is set to balance with the run type being set to overlap. So when the fullbacks do get forward, they tend to overlap the wingers quite effectively, looking to create a lot of space down either flank. As for the defensive positioning, it's set to step up. Now this does help with the very aggressive counter-pressing and nature of the side. You want the fullbacks to get nice and high, nice and wide, nice and close to the opposition wingers higher up the field. And if not, into those wider sections, trying to prevent those crosses from being fired into the box. As you'll see for the left-hand side, now more so, the only real tweak that there is, and I have made to it, is join the attack is on, looking to bomb down that left flank quite a bit more than what the right back would do, but more so, overlap and of course, step up. As you'll see here for the likes of Lobotka slash Jorginho, of course, um, a nice, a nice effective role for him. I must say, this, this system is fantastic. I absolutely love the system. It's up there with, with some of the best of them, to be fair. Um, but for this Jorginho role, you want him to be able to have that free roaming movement, but not being able to progress too far high up the field. So for the defensive behavior, set to a balanced approach, looking to try and keep the shape of that DM and the, the shape of the midfield in hand. Of course, you don't really require him running all over the place and, you know, cutting past lanes and being more of a zonal type player. He was always going to stick in front of that back four, protect them as best as possible, but over and above that, not do too much. The attacking support, he said to stay back while attacking, not really venturing too far forward, looking to try and run things from the back. As for the inceptions, again, it goes back to the very aggressive nature on the defensive end, but Jorginho is not really like that. And even for Arsenal these days, he can look to put in a tackle and be a bit aggressive every now and then, but more so for the interceptions, he's not going to chase the ball. He's going to look to more or less try and position himself in the correct, accurate places to try and win the ball back. But if not, He's going to look to try and hold his position as best as possible. And more so, I think the defensive behavior being set to balanced and the interceptions being set to conservative reflects a very good Jorginho type role. As for the positioning freedom, I've set him to deep line playmaking. Now, of course, with the possession based brand of football that you are looking to play, 
This is a necessity, allowing him to pop up in the little half spaces, in and around your defense, show for the ball, collect it off of the back line or off, off, off of the goalkeeper, and obviously looking to run the midfield, progress it forward, have those little five yard passes, have the midfield ticking over very effectively. For the defensive positioning, of course, the two number eights will be told to, you know, drift wide, help support the fullbacks and the wingers, but the, the natural DM position of what Jorginho did, he wouldn't look to drift. He would look to more or less stay central, man that's back four area in the central area as much as possible. As for the likes of Zelensky taking up the role of Hamshik, um, very similar roles for Hamshik as well as Alan. Um, every now and then though, you would see Alan break into the box. And to be fair, Hamshik would do a very effective job with that as well. Sometimes breaking into the attacking area, other times creating and facilitating. And that's more or less the role that I've tried to create for this uh, left-handed sided midfielder. Stay back while attacking, so therefore he wouldn't be making those overlapping runs of the striker. Of course, you will see with um, the likes of Mertens and his role as the striker, he does seem to drop a bit deeper, but you don't really require your two eights to overlap. It, it, it breaks the structure, breaks the rotation, and that's not really the game plan that Sari had. It's all about dominance, opening up the, the opposition, showing for the pass when required, supporting the attack going forward and backwards, but not breaking the structure. It was all about structure for him as well. The support on crosses is set to stay on the edge of the box, not looking to break into that area, and that's also why I've set it to five, because if you set it to seven or eight or high and above that, it does encourage the midfielders to break into that attacking area, and it was a very seldom thing that both the number eights did. Um, maybe Alain a little bit more, though, to be fair. For the interceptions, though, I've set it to aggressive, allowing them to implement that very aggressive style of football, that nice, good counter press, winning the ball back nice and hard the field, and obviously looking to gain possession. As for the defensive positioning, I've set it to cover the wing, looking to drift into those wider areas. Of course, with Jorginho more central, you do require the number eights to you know, have a bit more legs to the game and look to try and stretch the game on the defensive end, looking to try and pick up those runners, support the wingers as well as the um, fullbacks in those defensive areas. For the positioning freedom, however, of course, you want to try and create this rotational type structure showing for the ball, popping up in little half spaces, allowing to, you know, either pull players out of position or just be a nuisance on the offensive end. And more so for the likes of Hamshik as well as Alan, free roam does generate a very effective rotational type system. On to the role of Alan now, of course, a very similar system. The only real tweak I have made is the attacking support. I've set it to balance now. This will encourage him every now and then to get nice and hype the field and sometimes, sometimes break into that attacking area if required. Of course, if the space is there, if the opportunity is there, he will look to make that forward run. But other than that, there's no major change to it. Free roam, uh, stay on the edge of the box, and of course, aggressive interceptions. Okay, so moving on to the likes of the right wing. Of course, Callahan, he was a bit more of a, a natural winger and in order to try and replicate that role for him, I've gone ahead and set the... Uh, Defensive support set to basic, allowing him to sometimes drop a bit deeper, help support the defense, other times hanging up the field. But the most important thing and the factor for this right-hand side is he would often hug the touchline, especially with the right back not always getting forward. You would expect the right winger to try and generate as much space down that left hand, or sorry, down the right hand flank, um, and therefore stay wide is going to be essential. In terms of the support runs, now you can set him to get in behind, and that would be a very effective role, but sometimes he would look to sometimes drift central, link up very effectively with the midfield and the striker. So you don't want to eliminate that factor from his game, especially if you are playing a position-based brand of football, because if you always have one of your players breaking in behind, they can't really link up very effectively and maybe show for a potential pass. Maybe you might need a, an extra player in and around that right-hand side. So therefore, I think a more balanced approach best suits him when going forward and obviously in this offensive system. As for the interceptions, it's set to aggressive. Of course, that helps with, with the counter press as well as the support on crosses is set to stay on the edge of the box. Now, every now and then he does tend to get nice and deep. Back post runs are, can be very effective, but more so because you are looking to have that more natural winger approach, you want him to facilitate on the edge of the area. And therefore, I think stay on the edge of the box best suits how he played. Onto the likes of Raspadori slash Insignia. Now, more of the attacking threat down the left-hand side, like I did say earlier. Napoli would look to funnel a lot of their attacking outlets down this left channel, and Insigne was a massive factor to that, of course. He was an offensive juggernaut. With a 5'5 five five stature, he was absolutely incredible. I don't actually know if he was 5'5". Five five. Um, I think around there, 5'5", five 5'6", five, five something like that. But nonetheless, in order to replicate his role, just like with the right-hand side, a basic defensive support, allowing him sometimes to hang up the field and be a bit more of a counter-attacking option, slightly higher up the field, also looking to try and pin the opposition fullbacks that they wouldn't always be able to break forward and be involved in the attacking outlet for your opposition. Um, and then, of course, every now and then he could look to drop a bit deeper and get on the ball and look to obviously drive at the opposition. 
In terms of the, the chance creation, I've set it to cut inside, and of course, support runs set to come short. Now, this more or less involves him as a cutting inside forward, inside forward, you could say, getting off shots on his right foot, linking up very effectively with Mertens in some moments, um, and sometimes even taking up that more central striker role. And you, you will see with how Mertens does play, he does vacate that central role every now and then. Um, and therefore, you would want and expect Insignia to be able to break into the box, take up that more striker role, take off or take on a, a few more shots for himself. Um, and he was very effective with doing so. In terms of the interceptions, just like with the right hand side, it's going to be set to aggressive. But the change that we do see here is the support on crosses is set to balance sometimes in the box, waiting to attack, other times looking to stand the edge of the area and looking to facilitate. Now, this does go hand in hand with how Napoli are wanting to play or how they wanted to play under Sari, looking to build up very effectively outside the box and looking to work it into the attacking area. Finally, onto your striker. Of course, this was Drius Mertens. Now, essentially, also not the tallest, strongest of figures, so therefore they used it to their advantage. Of course, they also had Milik at the time, and he was obviously that more physical target man type unit. But in terms of Mertens, the support runs are set to a balance width, allowing him to drift all along the back line, but also sometimes take up that more central role if required. The most important factor for this position is going to be false nine, allowing him to drop deep, link up very nicely with the, the midfield, get on the ball very effectively, and also looking to drive and create for his fellow forwards. At the same time, with this false nine um, attacking outlet being set to on, it does allow him to vacate that more central role, especially with the balance width also being on. And it, then for does allow the likes of Insigne to drift inside into that more striker aggressive role. And speaking of aggressive, the interceptions is also set to aggressive. Now this, as you'll see for the front line, they're all set to aggressive, looking to close down as many passing lanes when the opposition look to build out from the back. As for the likes of the defensive support, I've set it to basic just like with the other forwards, allowing them to sometimes drop a bit deeper, support the defense if required, but other times they can also look to hang higher up the field and be a bit more of a counter-attacking outlet for the side. And there you have it, guys. I hope you have absolutely enjoyed this video. If you have, hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you are new. Um, we, we do make videos like this. Of course, it does always take time. I want to try and deliver the best possible video for you. So I don't want to just go out there and spout a whole lot of BS and say this is how it happened and no I want to do the research, I want to watch the games, I want to you know watch the little YouTube videos that have been made. I want to do all that before I present to you a very clean classy video. So if you guys could hit that like button, there was a lot of research that went into this. But out of 10, you guys can also let me know down below in the comment section what you would rate the system out of 10. But for me personally I would give this a very high 9.5. Defensively, you can be exposed, especially with that high line. And Koulibaly and um, Raul Abiol at the time, they weren't the fastest of players. Of course, Koulibaly was slightly faster, but you could definitely be caught out on the break. And to be honest, with this current you know, Napoli side, they don't have that much pace in their back line to begin with. So you can be caught out with that, and that's the only reason why I have marked it down from a 10 to a 9.5, because I do think that is the, the glaring error. But other than that, the possession-based game, I love. The rotational system, having players all over the field, pulling the opposition players out of position, works perfectly. Um, so yes, you guys can let me know down below what you think of the system, how you like the Napoli side from 2016-17. From everything you can let me know down below. But until then, I will see you guys later. I'm out.